Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to present um, demo and code walkthrough on the adaptive card extensions, which I have recently submitted to the SPFX uh, adaptive card extensions uh, GitHub repo. Uh, little bit about myself. I am Siddharth Bhagas. So I am uh, a Microsoft MVP and I'm an active PNP contributor and proudly uh, showcasing all the badges which David has talked about. Uh, about various credly pages which we get while we are contributing to all the PNP reports and everything. Uh, these are some of the social handles through which you should be able to connect with me. So uh, today I'm going to talk about an S component to basically show multiple cards and items from the SharePoint list uh, and uh, at a time based on a date. Uh, this is the report to the uh, sample from which you would be able to download the repo and also uh, make changes if you like, or you can just let it use it as it. Uh, uh, by just building it. Uh, let's first see a summary of the uh, this particular adaptive card extension sample. Uh, so it basically is a single component here which, where we would be able to show various cards and items from the SharePoint list at a time, and that would be based on the date. So that is why I call this as a dynamic announcement, wherein uh, as a practical use case, what we can do is we can use this particular uh, adaptive card extension solution to display different kinds of announcements uh, in our Viva Connection dashboard, right? Uh, the good thing about this sample is that um, generally when we create an adaptive card extension, uh, we would have one card view and we could have multiple quick views, right? Uh, but uh, generally, if you want to make any change to the uh, quick view or any changes to the card view, we would have to probably, uh, based on where the template is being stored, we would have to probably change the code and uh, redeploy it, right? So here it is kind of a reusable adaptive card extension wherein a single uh, component would be able to render different formats of adaptive card extension and that which is being configurable in a SharePoint list. So we will see that how that will work in a while. And then there is an option in the card view whether we can choose whether we wanted to open an external link or we wanted to open a quick view on the click of the card view or we don't want to do any any such action. We just wanted to have a plain and simple card view to be displayed on the uh, dashboard. Right. Uh, some of the examples which I think uh, this can be useful is to basically show the communications uh, or the news and articles which we can get it from the external external systems or external APIs from the same way we can implement RSS feed to be displayed and update into SharePoint list. Uh, any other important updates a quart of the day, a tip of the day, or any other announcement which we think we would like to give to all the uh, users within our organization in our Viva Connection dashboard itself. Now, uh, these are some of the uh, other features uh, which uh, these adaptive card extensions uh, provide. Is basically, you know, allows us to create the list from the configuration panel. So it means that you don't have to pre-create the list uh, from manually uh, from the SharePoint, but you can use this adaptive card extension and just click on the button, and it will automatically create the required schema or required list to be used for this. There is an option to enable auto rotate the card for every four seconds so that it is configurable in the uh, web part property in the card properties itself. Uh, then there is previous and next button to navigate between different items. And uh, we can also uh, basically use the same card uh, on the uh, multiple times on the dashboard uh, pointing to different lists because the list uh, from where to get the data is configurable in the web part properties itself. So without much uh, ado, let's uh, quickly see the demo. Uh, so this is my dashboard. OK, and you can see many adaptive card extension, but we are mostly focusing on this particular component. So right now, if you see, it is showing one uh, card view, which is PNP landing page, a single URL to find them all. So once you click on it, it will take us to the home page where we will be able to find all the links to the PNP. Uh, on click of next, it is showing a different sample, which is basically a restaurant sample and you click on it and you see a different kind of quick view. So the first uh, uh, card view which we have seen was, was a sample to link to the external system. Uh, this one is where we are displaying a quick view uh, and this is one of the uh, example from the adaptive card designer IO from where it shows how we can uh, different kinds of adaptive card can be displayed. Uh, next. Uh, it's an image gallery sample. This is again from the uh, designer, uh, adaptive card designer samples only, where we can display some of the images uh, within the adaptive card. So now you can see that though there is a single card view, uh, but on each card view uh, which we display, there are different formats in which we can display 
uh, quick views also, right? So it's every quick view would can have its own format, and we will see how uh, that will work, how that is working. And uh, this is another sample of you know FAQ, which is basically available in the Adobe Card sample to display the uh, FAQ uh, questions and answers from there, right? Uh, first, let's see also see the uh, properties which are available. So uh, you can configure the obviously the card title, which is displayed like dynamic as then the card icon and the list name from where we wanted to get the data from and uh, this button will uh, basically create a list uh, if at all you wanted to create a new list and use this card in multiple in the uh, same dashboard but you wanted to add this multiple times and then there is a auto rotate uh, on and off property which will basically kind of auto rotate a particular card here every four seconds so uh, this was the sample and uh, now let's uh, let's see the uh, schema of the list. OK, so so this is basically the list from where all the uh, three cards which we have seen right now is uh, coming. Uh, so first column which we have is the card view title and the description, which will basically control what we are displaying on the card view title and the description. Then there is start and end date. Uh, as I said, it is more like an announcement. So this is a feature where you can have a single list, but you can control what you wanted to display on that particular uh, dashboard or what all items you wanted to get based on the start date and end date. So it means it's like an uh, expiry of a particular announcement or expiry of a particular card. So if the current today's date will fall between the start date and end date, then only it will display here, otherwise it won't. So we are just filtering based on the start date and end date. So right now, if you've seen, uh, it was displaying these three samples, uh, these four samples, sorry, uh, the FAQ image gallery and the test one. Then there is a column for own card selection type. So this will tell the uh, code logic, you know, what to do when a card, particular card is selected. So if it is a quick view, uh, it will basically go and refer these two columns, which I'll be talking about in a few seconds. Uh, but if it is just an external link, what it will do is it will try to find from in which link you wanted to redirect to. So, so this is where the uh, links to an external link would work whenever a card is been clicked. Now, if it is a quick view, then what we have to do is we have to basically define the schema and the data here. Now, so this is something which we have to understand. Uh, generally, when we create an adaptive card extension, what we do is we define our adaptive card schema. Uh, within our code base itself within a template folder somewhere and then what we do is we have our data method which we basically kind of pass the dynamic data to that adaptive card schema and uh, then the rendering of the adaptive card takes place by the uh, spfx framework itself right so this is where uh, you know rather than getting that adaptive card schema from the uh, code solution or from the template folder what we are doing is we are allowing user to make it configurable in the shared list itself. So here you can define all the schema which you have and the data co data column would be where you have to basically uh, create your data which basically will combine with the adaptive card extension, right? Now one question, uh, you know, we would have in our mind list like, you know, how we are going to update uh, this uh, data column, right? So uh, in a way, if you think about this, basically because this is an announcement kind of thing, uh, behind the scenes, probably you might have a power automate or you might have other automation which uh, would have been running behind the scene, which will take care of updating this column. So like if, for example, if consider an RSS feed which we wanted to display onto the adaptive card here and which probably can be on the daily basis, uh, a power automate would be kind of uh, running daily or uh, on a scheduled time. And what it will do is it will uh, read the RSS feed and what it will do is it will automatically, uh, not automatically, but basically based on our logic, it has to create a specific JSON format in which the schema uh, would require, right? So that is how both of this would combine and then it will, uh, uh, the SPFS framework would take care of displaying that data uh, in the quick view itself. So now let's just quickly see, you know, how uh, we can uh, probably uh, uh, create a new entry here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this adaptive card template uh, repo, uh, wherein there is an adaptive card sample, uh, uh, which basically displays the event schedules and registration. Okay. And within this, if you think about this, uh, there are two, uh, uh, two JSON files. One is the template JSON file, template file, and the data file, which is there, right? So let me do one thing. Let me create one uh, repo, uh, one sample here. So 
uh, let me call this uh, the small item because type and column we are not using. Uh, event MS equal to 2021. Uh, so agenda. And I'll say on card selection, I wanted to open the quick view, right? So that's why we don't want to put any external link here. And let's now put the adaptive card JSON in the data here. So as this is just a uh, sample, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the schema from here, which is readily available for the event schedule in the uh, JSON column. And uh, we also have the sample data, which is uploaded here as a part of this sample. So I'm going to just copy this and I'm going to put it in the data column. I'll choose the start date, which is uh, earlier than today, and end date, end date, which is later than today. And I'll just save it here. Uh, let's just refresh the dashboard now. And uh, if you see, the new item has been created here, and it is getting displayed. MS Ignite 2021. Click here to show agenda. And if you click on it, it is showing exactly the way the sample uh, was showing uh in the repo itself uh, in the quick view with all the functionality as it is now one thing to note here is because this is an adaptive card announcement kind of thing uh, probably it will not support any update which we have to do like for example this particular sample what it does is it has a registration form also and on click of submit probably we might be submitting data to some of the api or we might be storing this data into sharepoint so that won't be supported but it's more or less a read only kind of scenario in which you can use this adaptive card. Uh, and this is how overall uh, you would be able to do it. Now, in this particular case also, if you think about it, probably uh, the agenda which is which we had displaying in terms of the data, we might be getting it from the API or we might be getting it from the uh, another system or within SharePoint somewhere itself. Uh, we just have need to make sure that that particular piece of automation is uh, going to go and update the data in a particular JSON format where uh, based on the schema which we have created. So this particular adaptive card extension is more or less targeted to uh, developers like us uh, who can basically, uh, you know, kind of use this kind of uh, reusable uh, adaptive card extension to be displayed somewhere and give a solution to the client that wherein if they say that, okay, I need to quickly display some announcement or something, but it should be in this format and uh, depending on the type of the announcement or type of the message we wanted to display different kind of card so in this case this would be um, uh, this can be used so uh, let me uh, quickly uh, that's it from the demo side so let's quickly do the code walk through you know how uh, how this particular piece is built uh, to start with uh, we have the uh, we have a typical uh, adaptive card extension uh, you know project structure which we have uh, then there is a property which basically uh, which are the configurable properties uh, to hold the values of the title, the list name, the icon, and the auto rotate true or false. Then we have state object which will basically hold the data which we get from the SharePoint, uh, the array of the items, uh, the current index which is being displayed in the card view, then the current item which will hold the actual uh, item within that particular uh, uh, selected uh, car uh, card. And then there is a click view. Uh, right now, this is not being used. Uh, I was trying something else, uh, but you can ignore this. Uh, then there is uh, on init method. Uh, so on init method, what we are doing is we are initializing an SP service provider class, which we'll be talking later. Uh, but overall, first thing to do is to get the uh, SP list item by using that SP provider class. Uh, then initialize all the states uh, with the items which we got from the SharePoint list. And uh, this is a fixture method, which basically it's kind of um, to help us to do the auto auto rotate. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, I got this uh, reference from one of the session uh, or demo which Patrick did on how to auto rotate the uh, particular card and if I, uh, from based on a few seconds. So this is the same logic which I have kind of you know uh, uh, get it from the particular demo which was been done. Uh, then we here we have only two cards. I mean the card view and the quick view. And the single quick view is basically uh, made dynamic in a way to get uh, the schema and the data from the SharePoint list. So there is there are no multiple quick views or anything. It's just single card view and single quick view here. 
Uh, next, uh, this is a method to create the list. Uh, whenever a create list button would be clicked in the uh, configuration window panel. And the properties uh, in the get property pen configuration, we have the list name from which we have to read the data. Then there is an, uh, a text, then there is a label to basically display the instruction text. And uh, the button to basically uh, uh, on when, when the button is clicked, we have to uh, create uh, call the method to create the SharePoint list. And then the pro property of auto rotate, whether we wanted to do auto rotate or not, or it has to be always manual. Okay. Moving on to card view, uh, first uh, thing to understand here is the buttons. So depending on the current item index, uh, we would have to either add one button or two button. So if the current index is greater than zero, then it means we know that uh, there are more items to be displayed. So we'll display previous button also. Uh, but uh, if it is a last item, if it is not the last item, then we have to display the next button. So this is the logic, typical logic to basically enable, disable, uh, either whether it is a single button or multiple buttons on the card view. Next thing is on action. Uh, this is where uh, whenever an action button from the card view is been clicked, uh, so here what we are doing is we are just incrementing and decrementing uh, the index and the current item object, uh, change the current item object based on whether the previous or next button has been clicked. In the data method, uh, as I said, the card view is basically getting data from the SharePoint list and from the current item. So what it will do is we are displaying the primary text which would be uh, configured in the SharePoint list and uh, the description which would be configured in the SharePoint list based on the current uh, item which is being displayed. Now, uh, this is important. Uh, on card selection means what we need to do whenever a user clicks on the card, right? So depending on what is the uh, current value set of the current item in the card, whether it is a quick view, we will return the uh, quick view object. But if it is an external link, then we would return the uh, object of the type external link and also we will set the target parameter to the uh, column value which is there in the external link URL. And if the card view selection doesn't have any action item, then what we are going to do is we are going to do nothing. So it means nothing would happen on click of that. Uh, then coming to the quick view, uh, so this is interesting. Uh, generally in the quick view, what we would have is we would have, we would be either returning the, uh, making the API calls, uh, getting data from somewhere uh, based on the use cases or the scenario. So in this case, we know that we just have to get the data from a particular column in the SharePoint list item. So what we are doing is if it is, uh, if the current item is of the card selection type of the quick view, then we are passing the JSON object and we are uh, reading the uh, adaptive card uh, data column, quick view adaptive card data column to pass data to the uh, adaptive card schema. And same way for the template, uh, rather than reading the template from the template folder, which would generally be in somewhere in the course structure, we are reading the schema from the adaptive card JSON column and uh, again passing it and returning it so that, you know, basically whenever SPFX framework would have to uh, display the UI, it will combine the schema object with the data object to basically dynamically create the uh, quick view and display it in the uh, UI, right? Uh, next uh, is the SP provider class. So SP provider class, basically uh, we are using PNP, uh, but we are using the older version of PNP. When I started, uh, uh, I still start uh, worked on the older version, but yeah, this would be a right candidate to update to the uh, new version of the PNP. Uh, so you can see that we are initializing the context object here. And then there is a get list item method wherein we are getting the item from the list uh, based on the uh, filter of the start date and end date. Uh, and then the other method which we have is the create list with column, which is the, uh, this is the method which takes care of the creating the list uh, with the required schema which we need for uh, supporting all the uh, logic behind the adaptive card extension. So this is how, uh, and there is one more method checklist, uh, which is just to check whether the list already with the same name already exists or not. So if user tries to create again this uh, list with the same name, we can just display an error message saying that list already exists. Right? So yeah, so this is it. Uh, uh, this is it from my side. You know, uh, hope uh, this particular sample is useful uh, for the community and can be used as it is in some of the use cases at least. Thanks for uh, watching and thanks for listening. And uh, Patrick, over to you. 
Great stuff there. Thank you so much, Siddharth. Thank you.